Hi, everyone. My name is Patrick Hoyt. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you guys today about continuous integration. Um, so let me just set the stage here with a quick story. Um, and, uh, and hopefully this will, this will help the presentation. Um, we have a, a hypothetical business. Um, and let's just say that this business is called uh, Half Stack Academy. And so Half Stack is an upcoming coding academy. Um, they have a growing reputation. They're teaching like a really hot new programming language. It's called Junior Script. Um, it's really cool stuff. And I will just find my cursor. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Cool. Um, and so um, half stack. Um, they're, they're teaching code, they're, they're really great developers. Um, and they've actually developed an application that facilitates their day-to-day -day, uh, business functionality. So this, these are some of the features of the application that they have developed. Um, their, their app can process students, it can maintain the workshops that students work on, and it can also maintain data about faculty and teachers. Um, and they, they have a whole development organization um, for their platform. Um, and so the, the way they've kind of done it, like any good development organization, they have separate teams. Uh, each team works on a given feature. Uh, so let's say a student's team, a workshop's team, and a, uh, like a faculty, a teacher's kind of team. And so um, their development process, what, what do they do? Um, each team will, will check out from, let's say, a master branch. They'll work on um, the features that their, their product manager um, you know, wants to get implemented and put into the app. So the teams, they work on their features. It goes through a QA cycle. Um, and and you know, while all this is going on, there's, there's a deadline. Um, the product guy, Dan, he really wants this, this feature. and um, and it's, it just has to get released. So, so the developers, they finish the feature, it gets tested. Now it's time to release. Um, and so, you know, like, like any good development organization, they have an integration environment. Um, let's uh, integrate our changes onto the master branch, um, and let's get this release done. Um, well, the first problem is that our release engineer, he's, he's on vacation. Um, so we can't even deploy to our integration environment right now because our release engineer is not here. We're delayed from that. And then, OK, so our release engineer, he's, he, he finally came back. Um, and we, we tried to do this merge. Well, it turns out that there's, there's been a lot of changes on the master branch since, since they originally checked out the code. And they're, they're just having so many merge conflicts. They had to do so many changes. Um, to get the merge to work, they actually have to, I mean, they've made so many changes, they have to go through another QA cycle um, because, because the merge was so messy. Um, you know, so, so what happens at this point? Um, you know, the, the product is late. Um, the, Dan, the, the product manager, his boss is, is just on his case and, and everyone is unhappy. So this is where we could introduce continuous integration. Um, and before I talk about, talk about the problem first. So and I did talk about the problem, really. The code was checked out for too long. We had, because the code was checked out for so long, there was this big risk of integration conflicts. And we ended up with a merge hell, really, when we tried to integrate um, the changes onto master branch. Um, sometimes the time it takes to integrate uh, changes could exceed the time it took to actually code the feature. Um, one term that you might hear is, is like a big bang release. Um, so this is where we would introduce continuous integration to try and alleviate some of these problems. Uh, continuous integration was first, I guess, coined, kind of conceptualized by a guy named Grady Booch. He was an IBM engineer, or he probably still is. Um, and uh, he's actually 
most famous for, for, uh, for coming up with UML, which is the uh, uh, unified modeling language. Um, and and uh, there were uh, some people at Extreme Programming, and they really like this idea of continuous integration. Um, with Extreme Programming, you might hear this, you might hear like some of the things that they, that they kind of, I don't want to say pioneered, but they're really known for. Um, pair programming, test-driven development, continuous integration, small releases. Um, it really, it all goes along with this agile development process. So what, what, you know, what are we even talking about here? What is continuous integration? Continuous integration um, is the practice of frequently integrating new code with the existing code repository. So basically, it requires developers to integrate into a shared repository, like an integration environment, several times a day. And when they commit these changes, um, it's, it's an, like an automated build. Um, so, you know, I'm a developer, I just do a simple change of, of how, of how my, my form works. I commit that, the build is automatically kicked off by a, a continuous integration server, a CI server. Um, when the build is kicked off, this also runs a, seri a suite of automated tests to check for regressions to make sure that um, the rest of the application is still running smoothly. Um, it really comes down to this idea of bite-sized changes to prevent regressions and functionality to maintain quality and also to get features out um, more quickly. So th with the principles of CI, um, I, 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 you know, I kind of just went through them. Um, there's a single source repository being our, our master branch, automated builds, self-testing with automated test scripts, um, and every commit should be on an integration machine and integrated environment. Um, and th just real quick, I'm going to, to read, I'm actually going to read the CI workflow, continuous integration workflow, but I'm trying to make a very specific point. So um, just real quick, developers check out their code um, into their private workspaces. When done, they commit the changes. So now the CI server monitors the repository, checks out changes when they occur. The CI server builds the system, runs unit in integration tests. The CI server releases deployable artifacts for testing. The CI server assigns a build label to the version. The CI server informs the team of the successful build. If the build or if any tests fail, the CI server alerts the team. Then the team can fix issues um, and, and continually integrate and test throughout the product. So the reason I, I read through that is, is essentially there was something that I kept saying over and over, and that was the continuous integration server. It's doing all of these things that, that we don't have to worry about as much. With our release engineer being on vacation or just being out sick, um, the, the CI server is, is essentially uh, helping us out with that. Um, and, and it's just like, besides writing code, this, the you know, continuous integration is just almost, you could say, it's doing all the things, right? So real quick, CI versus CD. Uh, CD is continuous deployment. Uh, continuous deployment is, is essentially an extension of continuous integration. Obviously, we've integrated our features. We need to deploy the features to production um, and, you know, and, and give the customers what they want. Um, so, that, you know, continuous deployment, it, it goes along the same thought process of low-risk releases and quick delivery of features. These are some CI, CI tools. There are, there, there are a lot of them. Um, some of the popular ones are like Travis, Jenkins, um, Team City, Go. Uh, Codeship was uh, mentioned uh, during one of our lectures as, as uh, kind of a, a, a introductory one. I don't know if I want to say that or not. But um, should everyone use continuous integration? Because it sounds pretty awesome. 
Um, but I would say, personally, not everyone should use continuous integration. The reason being, it, it's a development process, but it's also a cultural mindset. So if you're in a company that, well, first of all, you know, agile development, um, in my opinion, would be necessary. Just do it following an agile development process for continuous integration. If you're going to do waterfall, the big bang release, then there's really no purpose for continuous integration. Um, but, but it is a, a, a kind of a culture of, uh, of writing automated tests, writing unit tests, deploying, making sure you're committing your changes, making sure you don't just uh, do a commit and then leave the office. Like you have to, you know, you have to know what, what you're doing in a continuous integration uh, kind of mindset. And for some companies, that's, that's a big change, um, not only with training, um, I mean, you know, CI servers cost money and, and stuff, but, but it's, it's really the, uh, the kind of the, the personnel cost of training and really getting people on board with this, this strategy. Um, so you'll, you'll, you will see that companies will choose certain parts. Um, at my previous job, they had a Jenkins server. They didn't have continuous integration. Um, but they did run their automated builds off, or automated uh, tests. They were kicked off at a certain time using Jenkins. So there are some good practices that, that you can pick and choose. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that I want people to take away from this presentation is that when you're entering into any sort of um, maybe business tech environment, um, I'm, I'm really not sure about the super tech companies like Google and Facebook. I think they're, they're much better at, um, at CI. But in terms of like business environments, um, the, they, um, they have an established process. They're trying to improve on it. But, but you can't just make this massive change to, to a new mindset. Um, and so it's always a constant struggle um, with, with process. I think one of the things that I took away from my last job is that for the, the developers would say, you know, writing the code is the easy part. The hard part is really communicating, getting good process, and making sure that everyone's on the right page. So that's my presentation. Thank you for listening.